Welcome to this video demonstrating how to use and navigate OpenClinica for data entry for the anode trial. First of all, a quick explanation of what OpenClinica is, as well as some key terms used in the application. OpenClinica is an open source clinical trials application for electronic data entry and data management. It is accessed via a web browser. The current supported browsers for using OpenClinica are Firefox, Chrome and Internet Explorer. Before showing you around OpenClinica, I'll explain some key terminology that is used within the application. Study, this refers to the trial, in this case anode. Subject, this is a participant within the study. Event or study event, this refers to a data collection point such as randomization, trial entry or follow-up. CRF, this stands for case report form. A CRF is a form that collects and contains information for each event for a subject. Discrepancy notes. These are queries or annotations for data items where a value that has been entered is not as expected. Now let's have a look at the application. You can see the URL for our test OpenClinica site at the top of my screen. First of all, you should log in and you'll find the login details for the training exercises in your training pack. After logging in successfully, you'll be greeted with the home page. On this page, you can see the following things. At the top, there is the name of the study as well as the name of the centre. I'm using the centre from the previous randomization training exercise, Centre 150. Beneath this is the navigation bar. Clicking the home button will always return you back to the home page. Next, the subject matrix. The subject matrix is a table showing the event status for all of the subjects recruited at the centre. From this page, you can access all of the various events for a subject and view, enter or edit data in the CRFs. Each row represents a subject. The first column contains the subject ID, also known as the study number, or in the case of anode, the pack number. All of the subsequent columns contain the study events for the data collection points in the study. As you can see here, the study events are randomization, entry, woman outcomes, infection, six week telephone follow up and withdrawal. The next button on the navigation bar is the add subject button. This button can be ignored because as shown in the previous randomization training video, subjects are added into OpenClinica automatically via the randomization program. Moving along, the Notes and Discrepancies button is next. We'll go into more detail regarding this tab in the next video, but if you were to click this button, you would see a table listing all the discrepancy notes for this centre's subjects, allowing the user to track and manage the resolution process. So back to the subject matrix. You can see the two subjects randomised in the previous training video, Z15005 and Z15006. You can also see there are some different icons beneath the study events. These icons represent the different statuses of data entry for an event. I'll quickly run through the most used statuses and what they mean. There's a key on the left hand side of the page for reference. Firstly, the green icon with a white tick indicates that data entry for this event has been marked as complete by the user. In the case of the randomization event, this is automatically done upon the successful randomization of a woman into the trial. Secondly, the dark blue icon with a small standby icon. This means the event has been scheduled and is ready for data entry. We automatically schedule some events when a subject has been added. In the case of Anode, this is the entry and woman outcomes events. The reason these events are automatically scheduled and the other events are not is because we are expecting every subject to have data entered for this event by the recruiting site. Events we don't anticipate being entered for every subject by the site will display the light blue icon. This means that the event has not yet been scheduled and must be scheduled by the user before entering the data. For Anode, this state applies to the infection, withdrawal, SAE and any follow-up events. Finally, the orange icon with the white pencil indicates that data entry has been started but has not yet been marked as complete. Now we've looked at the statuses, I'll now demonstrate how to enter data for both a scheduled and non-scheduled event.
For scheduled events, click the scheduled icon for the relevant subject and then click View Enter Data. This takes you to the study event page for the selected subject. In this case, I've gone to the entry page for subject 15005. To get started, click the Enter Data button in the Actions column. This will open up the CRF. CRFs are divided up into multiple sections. You can see the title of the sections in the grey bar above the Save and Exit icons, and to see how many sections there are, you can click the drop down menu next to the tabs above the title. You can see the entry form has six sections, A through F. Now we can start entering data for section A, Eligibility. This section, broadly speaking, mimics the randomization website and asks the user to confirm the inclusion and exclusion criteria. The first question asks you your hospital. Simply click the drop down list and select your hospital. This will also populate the coded box next to the hospital name. The rest of the questions on this tab can be split into three categories. There are questions which can be answered through a drop down menu, such as A1. Simply click the box next to the question for a list of responses. In this case, has the woman given informed consent can be answered yes or no. The next question asks the user to indicate the initial type of consent given, with written, verbal and unknown listed as responses. The next type of question is a question that requires a date as a response, such as A2, A3 and A5. These can be answered either by typing the date into the box, make sure to follow the formatting to the right of the question, day should be numeric, followed by a hyphen, then the first three letters of the month, with the first capitalised, then another hyphen, succeeded by the full numeric year. Alternatively, select the date widget next to the text box and select the date through this method. To the right of some of the questions, you'll notice a circular icon with a question mark. These are tooltips. Hover over them to see some further information which might be helpful in answering the question. So in this example, the EDD tooltip asks the user to use the best estimate from an ultrasound scan or date of last menstrual period based on 40 week gestation. You've probably also noticed the little light blue flags next to each question. More on those later. Finally, there are questions which ask the user to input an answer in free text, such as A3, time of delivery on this tab. Times must be entered manually and the format is two hour digits using 24 hour time, followed by a full stop, followed by the two minute digits. As you can see, I've now filled in all of the questions for this section. Once you are happy with your answers to a particular section, press save. If there are no problems with the data entered, i.e. all expected questions have been answered with valid answers, then you'll be taken to the next section. In this case, section B, woman's details and previous obstetric history. So you can see on this tab, there's only two questions. I'll answer the first one as normal, and if this woman has had no previous pregnancies, I'll answer this question as no before clicking save. However, if I answer yes to this question, you'll notice that a series of further questions will pop up under the header previous obstetric history. The user should then complete any questions that pop up after the leading question has been answered. As before, click save once all of the relevant data has been added. You can now see this time I've answered some questions that have failed validation. Any questions that fail validation will display a red exclamation mark next to them after the user clicks save. In this example, I have failed to enter a value for question 2.5 and I have also indicated that the woman has had previously completed 11 pregnancies of 22 weeks or greater. The red exclamation marks correspond with error messages in red at the top of the screen. So you can see I've got two error messages, one politely asking me to enter a value for the question has the woman had a previous c-section and the other asking me to check my answer for the number of completed pregnancies at 22 weeks or greater as 11 is outside of the expected range. So I've now got the opportunity to change those values if they are incorrect. So in the case of 2.1 
I clearly meant to type 1, so I'll go ahead and change that. In the case of 2.5, let's assume I'm unable to locate the answer to has the woman had a previous c-section. I can still click save, and upon doing so, the data will save. Obviously, this data will need to be chased up or amended at a later date, so Open Clinica creates a discrepancy note for any data that has failed validation and was subsequently saved. If I go back to the previous section, you can see the small blue flag has now become a red flag. Again, I'll go into more detail regarding discrepancy notes in the next video. So I'll keep going with entering data for this woman for the entry form in section C, this pregnancy. Again, you can see I've raised some more validation errors. Ideally, these would be resolved as the data is being entered, but as before, you can still click save and raise discrepancy notes to be resolved at a later time. I'm generating and saving far more discrepancy notes than usual, so I can just demonstrate the resolution methods in the next video. The validation rules check a range of things for each question. For example, has the question been answered? For range values, does the data fall into the expected range? And in the case of the entry form, do the answers given match those provided at randomization? And now onto section D, this pregnancy. This section contains a table for entering all babies, live born and stillborn from this pregnancy. In the event this was a multiple birth and more than one baby needs to be entered, simply click the add button beneath the table in order to add another row to the table. Now onto section E for any packs unsuccessfully prepared. Once you have entered all the data and reached the final tab, you'll see a notes section where you can enter any relevant information not recorded in the previous tabs. And most importantly, there is a checkbox next to the mark CRF complete. Mark this box and a pop-up will appear. Click OK if you're happy with the data entered and click save. You'll be taken back to the study event page for the subject and an orange alert will appear informing you the data was saved and CRF marked as complete. Furthermore, you'll notice that the status now shows the green icon with the white tick, indicating the event has been completed. If you click the subject matrix, you'll now see this event is marked as complete. Now for entering data for an unscheduled event. If I click the light blue icon under the infection form, I can see Schedule, where I used to see View Enter Data. Click this and you'll be taken to the Schedule Study event for this subject. You then simply need to click Proceed to Enter Data and you'll be on this familiar page, the Study Event page for the subject. Now the event is scheduled, I can continue as before and click the Enter Data icon. I'm going to whiz through entering the data on this infection form as the method for completing and entering the form is the same as before. However, this time I'm going to stop at section C and exit. After clicking exit, I'll return to the subject matrix and you can now see that the icon for the infection form is the yellow data entry started icon. To continue entering data, click the icon, click view enter data and click the enter data icon. You can see that all of the saved data is still present and I can continue entering as though I'd never been away. Once all the data has been entered, again mark the CRF as complete and return to the subject matrix. The final thing to mention in this video is that some events are repeating. That is to say it's possible you will need to enter the same form multiple times. For example, if there are multiple infections, you will be required to fill in multiple infection forms. To do this, simply click the infection form icon and you'll see a new option, Add another occurrence, has now appeared. Clicking this takes you to the schedule event page again 
and upon clicking proceed to enter data, the user will be able to enter a second infection form. Again, I'll whiz through the data entry and complete the form. On returning to the subject matrix, you can now see there is a times two next to the event, informing you and the coordinating center that multiple infection forms have been scheduled for this participant. That concludes the data entry and navigation section of the Open Clinica training. Thanks for watching.